This is Pat. Pat's a rad old dude. Now what's the difference between a rad old dude and just a regular old old dude? Well, a trip through any old dude's garage should give you the answer. Pat's done some rad stuff in his life. He was a firefighter for over 30 years. But before he was rescuing cats out of trees and saving the occasional human life, he supported himself racing flat track motorcycles, flicking a 300 pound 750cc rocket ship around left handers at 100 miles per hour. You know, safe stuff. The kind of stuff a rad dude does before he becomes a rad old dude. The walls of this garage tell his story. Now, perhaps I'm a bit biased because Pat also happens to be my dad. Growing up, my brother and I enjoyed the type of understanding that can only come from parents for whom a steel left riding shoe and ladder trucks are already considered occupational necessities. I mean, they let us have a f***ing bike jump into the swimming pool in the backyard. If that's not support, I don't know what is. These days, my brother and I really enjoy hanging with this old dude. He's 66 years old, retired from the fire service, and boasts a fantastic gray mustache. Speaking of gray matter, he's still got some adventurous spirit between the ears. He races vintage motocross in the winter and water skis once a week in the summer. But somehow, despite living in the mountain bike mecca of Aptos, California, mountain biking has not been on his list of retirement hobbies. Tyler and I decided that had to change. These woods and the riding scene that developed around here shaped our lives. And who knows if we'd be doing the things we are today if it weren't for our proximity to these Aptos trails and the support of our folks. So how cool would it be to ride these trails with our dad? What would it take to finally get him into mountain biking? I told Tyler, I said, I think I might want to get one of those e-bikes. And Tyler goes, oh, dad, what do you want one of those for? And then the next day, he comes over. And he goes, you know, I thought about it. He goes, if that's what it takes to get you on your bike, he says, you should get one. So it's been about a year since that time. And I, these guys got me one. And I'm having so much fun on this thing. I'm riding my bicycle more than I'm riding my motorcycle now. I get up a little bit quicker. I can ride with these guys, which was never possible before. And I'm having so much fun. He's showing me some really, really cool trails in Nicene. Well, would you look at that? It appears we may be on to something. I usually have to wait until Crankworks Whistler every year to finally see him swing a leg over a mountain bike. Because, you know, the whole chairlift thing. But with this e-bike, he's finally taking advantage of the amazing trails right out his door. The plan is to take him on a trail that was our hands down favorite growing up. Hard to believe this is the first time the three of us have ridden this trail together. Might as well take a picture. Back in 05, I shot part of my first New World Disorder segment on this trail. I'm hoping we'll be able to find some of those old features to show Dad, but he's already having a good time. This is so cool. I wouldn't been able to be able to ride a trail like this with you guys without this e-bike. It's opened up a whole new world for me. We've already found some familiar territory from that NWD saggy, and it's just too good not to hike back up and session it again. Left-hander, left-hander, and more left-handers. There must be some flat track left in that blood. Oh, there we go, a right-hander. All right, enough of that. Let's get back to the left-handers. Oh yeah. This is cool This is the thing right here. My first new road segment. Um, we shot this log. I come in. I get onto it and ride down, because that's the one that I tailed off of. I'm psyched we're able to spot the remnants of this old stunt from New World Disorder 6. The forest has definitely reclaimed the log, but there's still enough there for a little nostalgic reminiscence. The 
So far, this ride is going great, and it's all thanks to this e-bike. Now I realize a lot of people have a lot of stuff to say about these e-bike things, and to address that, I'd like to say, well, never mind, that finger says it all. Back to riding. This is my first ride since having surgery on my right shoulder exactly four months ago to the day. I couldn't think of a better way to get back on the horse. The surgeon told me to wait four months before crashing, and everybody knows it's very, very important to follow doctor's orders. So here you go, doc. Such a strange request for a doctor to make, but I get it. Now I know this thing's sturdy. A couple more tire slides across the old wooden bridge, and then it's time to start heading back toward home. But before we make it out of the woods, we notice Ty's truck in the parking lot. We realize we're in for a special guest appearance. Ty's fiance, Skylar, has brought my daughter, Chloe. She has her bike and she's ready to rip. What do you want to do, Chloe? Um, I want to ride. <laughs> All right, we'll ride. Come on, guys, let's ride. In Chloe's world, there's nothing better than riding her mountain bike through muddy puddles. In my book, it doesn't get much better than having three generations on the trail together. There used to be such thing as too young to start mountain biking. And there used to be such thing as too old to start mountain biking. But these days, those limitations just don't exist. 20 inch trail bikes with plus size tires for your five year old, electric mountain bikes for rat old dudes. It turns out, this mountain biking stuff is pretty damn fun. And it's more inclusive now than ever. Seeing my dad and my daughter ride together on the trails that my brother and I grew up on is one of the best things I've ever experienced. All right, that's enough heartfelt voiceover for one episode, don't you think? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time I have another story worth telling.